How does it sound? Sounds grand. Look, don't worry, love. If anything goes wrong, I'll tell them. Never mind about the piano player, ladies and gentlemen. He promises he'll get it right by tomorrow. <laughs> it's me you can't do anything about. Deaf in one ear, deaf in the other. <laughs> Typical, isn't it, love? Wait till now to let on I'm half deaf. Hey, up. I shouldn't be here at all. I've got a man from the wireless waiting for me with his tape recorder. All together now. Sally. 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 Will it take long? Come on. The minute you get tired, we'll stop. I never get tired of talking, look. Other people get tired of listening first. Now, what's your name? Well, my name's John. I'm Gracie Fields. How do you do? Now, I'll tell you what. I'll just take my coat off. Prove I've got a frock on underneath. Right. It's from the act, you know. Take my coat off. Prove I've got a frock on underneath. <laughs> Mind you, sometimes difficult to tell one from the other. I'm sorry? Uh, one from the other? Well, what's in the act and what's real? They all get jangled up together. Well, perhaps that's something we could talk about. Oh, wake. <laughs> Not going to be one of them in-depth interviews, is it? Whatever you like. I'm not bothered either way, love. Interviews are supposed to help sell tickets. Get the bottoms on the seats. But we're sold out anyway. So we might as well enjoy ourselves, eh? Are you ready? I've had 70 years to prepare myself. I should be. Interview with Gracie Fields, December 1968. Gracie Fields, here you are. Still topping the bill. Still playing to packed houses. At a time when... Well, I should have more sense and put my feet up, I quite agree. Well, could you tell us how it all started? What sign were you born under, love? Aries. Ask me what sign I was born under. Perhaps you'd like to tell us what sign you were born under. Crying tonight. <laughs> my parents were living above my grandmother's fish and chip shop when I was born. January the 9th, 1898. Just after the Ice Age. And just before the last Brontosaurus was seen in Rochdale. <laughs> and that's your grandmother? That's right, she was called Sarah. Now, she started work down the coal pit when she was six. By the time she was 40, she'd saved 15 pounds and bought the shop. It's a barber's shop, but she soon changed that. Everybody called her Chip Sarah. of Fred and Jenny Stansfield, her mum and dad. Mm. She ended up with three daughters, me and Edie and Betty, and then my little brother Tommy came along. And every time my dad got a rise at work, we load everything onto the handcart and move house. Going up. That was my mother's favourite expression. Going up. Where are we going? Up. I'll be going up right enough if I'm late for school. Never mind if you're late. I want you looking nice. Down. After the ball is over. Come on, love, join in with me. After the break of dawn. After the dancers leaving. After the stars are gone. You must learn to sing louder, Grace. Louder. I get into trouble at school for singing loud, ma'am. So if you don't sing loud, nobody's ever going to hear you. Off you go to school. Right, ma'am. And I'll be off to see Mr. Grindrod. Oh, my mother was always going off to see people. Making plans, organising things. Like my future. Except I didn't realise it. <laughs> Oh, it's straight, love. Oh, is it creasing? Yes, it's not easy, then. I know I'm only the husband, father, yeah. wage earner, man of the house, but what's going on? Washing? I don't wear daft clothes like that. Oh, the paper's washing. Oh, we're taking in washing. 
Where did you get that hat? I mean, Where did you get that hat? Why do we have to take in washing? And what are you two doing here now? Hey, why won't anybody speak to me? Uh, you two up to bed. Go on, I've told you before. Oh, Go on. I'm surrounded by wet clothes. Not just uh, wet just clothes, but daft wet clothes. Grace says you're taking in washing. It's true. I'm taking in washing. We don't need the money. Not because of the money. It's theatrical washing from the Hippodrome. What for? I arranged it with Mr. Grindrod, the commissioner. I didn't say what's commissioner called. I said what for. Wherever I go, I shout hello. hello. <laughs> Both as bad as each other. Where know. did you get that hat? I give in. It doesn't matter. I don't want to know. Don't tell me. I'm doing no. it for Grace. No, you do Grace's washing for Grace. You do my washing for me. You're doing this theatrical washing for money, which we don't need. What happens when it's washed and dried and ironed? I don't know. You take it back and they muck it up again. We take it back. We watch the act. See how they do it. Maybe talk to them. Ah. Get them to help. Ah, thank you. Now I understand. Ah, it's a free <coughs> pass into theatrical profession. Yes. Ah. <laughs> but why have we got daft wet clothes hanging all over the kitchen? What's wrong with backyard? The backyard? You want the neighbours to know we're taking in washing? And that's your father? Yes. <laughs> he was funny, my father. It was never ambitious for me, the way my mother was. But then, well, he, he'd never had dreams of being a singer himself, and my mother had. She had a lovely voice. Better than mine. <laughs> but she had four children as well, so... When was your first public performance? In a competition at the Hippodrome. Can you remember what you sang? Oh, yes. It was a nice, sentimental love song. What makes me love you as I do? There's other girls as nice as you. <laughs> they don't write songs like that anymore. That one as well, eh? <laughs> it's funny, though. It's really a song for a man, isn't it? But there's other girls as nice as you. It's like Sally. Now, there's a man's song for you. <laughs> but that's what they told me to sing, so that's what I sang. Now let's have a nice big welcome for Little Grey Stansfield from Baron Street. <laughs> winning ten and sixpence in a talent competition. By the time I was ten years old, I was touring with a juvenile troupe called, now wait for it, Healy's Garden of Girls. <laughs> was it as much fun as it sounds? <laughs> no. No. Wasn't fun at all. were much older than me. And I was only 10, and they were 16, 17, 18, so I was bullied, I suppose. They had me doing splits and falls and acrobatics till I could hardly walk. I was so bruised. And in the end, they made me ill. Ill? Well, you could say I had a nervous breakdown. Although in those days they called it St. Vitus Dance. What caused by bullying? They had me doing all the skivvying, running around at the digs. I remember I was taking hot water to one of the bedrooms one day. Come in. 
It's your turn next. What? Come on. You heard what the lady said. I'll hold her down. She might wriggle. No. Oh, you're next on the list. No, I'm not. Oh, come on. Yes, come on. Come on. Ah! 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 I was ten years old. I knew nothing about sex, anything like that. <laughs> I never told my parents. They thought I was homesick. I didn't speak at all for three weeks. But I haven't stopped since. Are you awake, love? A bit. How are you feeling now? I wanted to come home. All right. You're home. And you're staying. Do you want to stay at home? Go to school? Work in mill? Be ordinary? Or do you want to go up? I wouldn't mind being ordinary, just for a bit. So you shall. So, I was working half-time at the mill, and my mother, she'd stop at home and look after the house and my little brother Tommy until she had a better idea. She would work at the mill, and I would stop at home and look after Tommy and have more time to practice my dance steps and my singing. Grace Stansfield is a bit of a mouthful, so we've changed her name to Gracie Fields. <laughs> Gracie Fields? It'll look better on the bills. It's shorter and people will remember it more easily. Same initials as George Formby. Gracie? Gracie Fields? <laughs> Gracie Fields? So, Gracie Fields went off to play a season at Blackpool. A few weeks later, Grace Stansfield was home again, resting, waiting for the next engagement. And as Christmas was drawing near, Gracie Fields would go off to play a little part in pantomime. And in the new year, Grace Stansfield was home again, resting, singing loud, waiting for somebody to hear. And did somebody hear? Yes. Hmm. I was heard by an agent from Manchester, a man called uh, Hall, now Percy Hall. Now, he signed me on a long-term contract at five pounds a week. Good money, then. All I ever wanted to earn in the world was five pounds a week. <laughs> it's funny when you look back, isn't it? It's never really about money. Anyway, this Percy Hall, now, he booked me in a touring review called Yes, I Think So. All the shows had ridiculous names in those days. But the war was on, and I suppose people needed daftness. You want the last eight, do you? Yes, please. Right, yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> Very good, 
out, my love. Tom? Or should I say, almost very good. Suit yourself. You're not forced to like it. You made me laugh a couple of times. And it's not easy to make a comedian laugh. It's not supposed to be funny. It's just dancing. Who told you it wasn't supposed to be funny? My mother. Your mother? Listen, sweetheart, the world's full of singers and dancers. They're ten a penny. But for people like you and me, God's chosen few. <laughs> What's your name? Gracie Fields. Archie Pitt. And I give you even money. I'm the sort of man your mother warned you about. Hey. If you've done your homework, you'll know that Archie Pitt was my first husband. Eventually. And occasionally. I'm I... sorry. I've got to change tapes. Oh, right here. Well, carry on. Now, look here. I know it's Yorkshire, but do you think the world's leading nightclub could run to a cup of tea in the afternoon? <laughs> I'm sure they'll organise that for you. <laughs> There are red deer, orange sunsets, yellow sands, green fields, blue mountains and purple heather, somewhere over the rainbow. Let your travel agent put you in the picture, or ring this number now for your free holiday brochure. You'll love Colwyn Bay, heart of the North Wales coast. For your free Colwyn Bay colour brochure, phone Leeds 440188. The next few moments of sunshine are brought to you direct by Ventura. Enjoy them. If you'd like 120 pages of sunshine and value, phone for the Ventura brochure. Awful greasy skin. Soap and water isn't always enough. The dirt's much deeper in the pores, and that's how spots can start. Clearasil Deep Cleansing Lotion thoroughly removes the grease and dirt and then forms a protective barrier which guards against the bacteria that can cause spots. See that? Clearasil Deep Cleansing Lotion for greasy skin, and now Clearasil Deep Cleansing Milk for combination skin. Both cleanse thoroughly and help prevent spots. With his familiar pint of skull, Trevor looks like a normal scholar, but he is in fact a hyper-intelligent mega-being from a distant galaxy, which means he can score 180 at darts. With his eyes closed, beat the space invaders at their own game. Oh no, it's Trevor. He can even transmit telepathic commands. Two pints of skull. Naturally, Skull can't turn you into a hyper-intelligent mega-being with superpowers. But when you know Lager, you're a scholar. Shampoo has real honey, green apple, henna, silk, chamomile, and oat milk to bring out your natural shine. New V05, the shine that smiles. To help you choose your holiday, use our free brochure service and ask for up to four free holiday brochures featured in the Yorkshire Television holiday spots. Telephone leads 440188 now and ask for the brochures you want or fill out the coupon in your TV Times. Thank you. 
Interview with Gracie Fields, December 1968, second tape. Get sugar, love. Oh, no, thanks. We were up to your first meeting with Archie Pitt. Now read on. I can think of at least two reasons why I should have kept the distance from Archie. For a start, he was 34 and I was 16. And not only that, he was from London and I was from Rochdale. Oh, yes. Hey! And he was ambitious. But he knew the business and I knew nothing. What are you being at a show? It's all right. It's terrible. You want a swing? Ta. There's only two real performers in it. I wonder if I can guess who. <laughs> You're looking tired. Why do you always look tired? It's a bit of a walk from my digs. Where are you staying, Aberdeen? Somebody my mother knows. And I'll bet it's free and you help with the beds and the washing up. How did you know? I know everything about this business, love. Everything? Especially about ambitious mothers. I'll have a talk to your mother, give her some good advice. What sort of advice? Archie knows best. Have you seen my act? Yeah. Well, don't let your enthusiasm run away into hysteria. Oh, sorry. I quite like the funny song. What shot songs? You made me laugh a couple of times. And the rest? Well, my mother always said I had to tell the truth. So do as mother says. I prefer George Formby. You can always rely on Northerners to stick together. Stand by to the SSC side, sketch. I think I prefer George Formby as well. <laughs> <laughs> Is it all right then to tell the truth? Yes, my love. Always tell the truth. It will make our fortunes. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose he was right. Archie was right about a lot of things. And I suppose he must have seen something in me that nobody else had noticed. <laughs> he certainly had plenty of time to spot it. We were on the road for 18 months with Yes, I think so. 18 months? Mm. <laughs> there were hundreds of theatres. <laughs> you could tour forever, practically, without going to the same place twice. <laughs> Does this shop stock shot socks with spots on? Has this shop got shot socks in stock? I've hopped into pot shops, I've dropped into cop shops, and into tip top shops I've popped. They stock polka dot socks and odd socks, plus stock pots and what not and mops. But does this shop stock shot socks with spots on? Cause I've not got the socks that I own. Here's to 18 months hard labour with no remission. <coughs> Don't tell me you're beginning to like champagne. My mother always said that ladies drink port and lemon. I'm very fond of your mother, Grace, but I think I know more about ladies who drink than she does. Still prefer Dizer. God help us, what's to be done about you? I don't know. Somebody usually tells me. All right, I'll tell you. You're coming into my new show. Your new show? Yeah, I've had enough of giving artificial respiration to other people's shows. The next one's mine. Don't you need money for that? No. Just ideas and confidence, a bit of cheek, a title. Which of those have you got, then? All of them. Mm. What's the title? It's a bargain. Bound to be a bargain if you haven't got any money. It's a pity I can't be in it. What do you mean? Of course you'll be in it. Mr Hall's got me another job. He's your agent. You're the RT, so he does as you tell him. I signed this contract. Tell me about this contract with Mr Hall. Well, it's for ten years. And I get five pounds a week. But if I make more than five pounds a week, we... Split pay... the difference 50-50 with Mr Hall. How did you know? I told you, sweetheart, I know everything about this business. I know all of Mr Hall's and all the ten-year contracts. I know swindles that haven't been invented yet. Who the hell let you sign a contract like that? Don't tell me. Me mother. I'll see Percy Hall. Do you want some more? No, thanks. Please yourself. I think I'll have to marry you and stop the Mr. Halls from stealing your money. You'll be down. 
Used to two and a half years hard labour with no remission. You said that last time. It's always the same joke, sweetheart. We just dress them up different. But this time, we made the money. You made the money. All right, I made the money. How much did you make? Clear profit, about three quid. You spent it on this? No, I'm going to plough it back into the business. I told you, I'm writing another show. Ideas, a bit of cheek, a title. And a star. Who was that, then? Mr. Tower of London, starring Gracie Fields. I'm a star. First fair, you're the frequent profit, Margie. When are you going to marry me, Grace? Oh. I need to protect my investment. Never mind about that. Tell me about Mr. Tower of London. It'll be a sensation. It'll make us famous. Well, tell me about it. At the moment, it's all in there. It's all right. Plenty room for it. <laughs> Do you recommend this? No, sir. That's the manager. He's a bit skinny. What? what about the roast beef? Roast beef's off. Roast beef's off? Yes, sir. The cow got better. <laughs> never mind, never mind. I've almost decided. I know exactly what I want. We all know what you want. It's all in here. That's all right. Plenty room for it. <laughs> Just bring me the soup. One soup coming up. <laughs> now, we opened Mr. Tower of London in uh, 1918, end of the war. I suppose people would laugh at anything. <laughs> anyway, five years later, we were still on the road with it. We'd done 3,000 performances. Just about knew me lines by then. So, this is his Linton, is it? So what's wrong with his Linton? Just like every other place. Except it's nearly London, I suppose. Next stop, West End. I never see real places or real people. Just theatres, dressing rooms, comedians in funny clothes. West End? I've been in the business 25 years and I'm going to be an overnight success. What are you talking about? You've heard of Sir Oswald Stowe? Yes. There's God, there's the King and Queen, there's the Mayor of Rochdale and there's Sir Oswald Stowe. He wants to book the show into the Alhambra. <gasps> A real West End. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I wasn't joking. This will be a very good time to get married. Could be your last chance. Not that again. Been in the shop window too long, slightly faded. Look, if I say yes, it'll stop you pestering me about it. Looked after properly, it'll last you a lifetime. And the mayor of Rochdale will be very happy. But it's daft, you and me. Most things are daft. Can't even say daft properly. I oh, know I can't. 
I'm not offering you love's young dream. It's not hearts and flowers, it's common sense. The French call it a marriage of convenience, and it would be very convenient. And I'll take you to Paris for your honeymoon. What do you say? Buy now, while stocks last. All right, then. For years and years I've been a lonely spinster on the shelf. I'm right fed up with spending all my money on myself. I'm all prepared for married life in secrets I've been taught. And here's some little odds and ends I've been and gone and bought. One bridal gown, one eider gown, I've been living up since 1894. So we got married. I was 25 and knew nothing. All packed up in my little bottom drawer. Archie was 43 and knew what he was doing. We went to Paris for our honeymoon. But we came back early. The tea was rotten, and there was a show to get on with. <laughs> uh, you know, outside of the business, we had nothing to talk about. Now, I don't, I don't blame Archie for any of it. Should have realised I was marrying a balance sheet. <laughs> uh, I was just too daft to say no. And he did get me into the West End, like he promised. Good God. What's the matter? Stars of the West End aren't supposed to slave over hot sewing machines. In the programme, it says costumes by Madame Roberts. That's me. If you tell the press it's you, I'll have you undrawn and quartered. Hey, look, look at this. Telegram from Evelyn Lay. Very nice. I think she must have heard of me. Of course she's heard of you. Well, even I haven't heard of me. Gracie, my love, will you ever realise how good you are? I need people to tell me. They'll tell you tonight. As long as they like the dresses. Twenty-five minute break between sketches, you see. 
Morier asked me to be in a play with him. Now, do you know who I'm talking about? A famous actor, wasn't he? Matinee Idol. He was lovely. <laughs> Mind you, I upset him. He kissed me once. And I said, don't be so soft, you're older than me, Dad. <laughs> More tea, love. No, not for me. <laughs> and then Archie had a big house built in Hampstead with 28 telephones and a lift. Really? <laughs> it's like living in a nursing home. Archie thought the lawn looked a bit bare, so he bought some squirrels. Money was rolling in. <laughs> I was getting paid £700 a week. Mind you, I was doing three shows a night, so I was on overtime. How did you do three shows a night? With great difficulty, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'd go off to the St James's to do my aristocratic acting. The innkeeper. Which is his room? At the top of the stairs, next to our bedroom. Very well. I shall get the keys from him now and go straight to my sister's at Worthing. And we'll see tomorrow if Julian will believe you or me. And then I'll go to the Alhambra to do me a little bit of a writing. Hey, 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 hey. You want the ages, love? Right, here we go. How having you is a nice having you. Having you be down, how having you. Having you house down, how having you. See why they call it, how having you. How having you is full of tradesmen who keep having you good and strong. I'd go off to the Café Royal to do my sophisticated campaigns. You look at me and smile, I'll understand. And with a little heart, you'll take my hand. And so on and so on, I'm waiting for... <laughs> we became quite rich, and I fell asleep a lot. Beautiful tune, beautifully played. Thank you. What do you think? Grace, are you listening? I was listening a bit, not much. Come and try it. What's the point? It's a song for the fella. I can't go singing love songs to Sally. People will think I'm peculiar. You are peculiar. I've just had a letter from an artist who wants to paint my portrait, so I can't be that peculiar. I don't want to spoil a beautiful friendship, but I can't see the words properly. Go on then, maestro. Maestro? You tell me the right word. Just play the bloody tune. Daft me singing it. We could always change the words again. We've changed the words three times already. Leave it. It's just what we need for the film. The film? Sally and our alley. Now, tell me, this film, is it something you forgot to mention or is it something you told me about and I've forgotten? You were probably asleep. I'm always either sleeping or working. There isn't time for anything else. So what's the problem? You're not interested in anything else. Excuse me. Go 
from. Never let it be said I stood in your way. You're making it hard for me. I'm sorry. The only face I've got. Shall I send me and study tomorrow? There's nothing wrong with the face. It's what lies behind the face. If you're looking for a brain, you're wasting your time. Awake. Oh, What's wrong? <laughs> I've never been knelt at before. You make me feel like an altar. I'm sure your husband knelt at your feet when he proposed. No. Too busy getting his books in order. End of the financial year, you see. Do you always talk a lot when you're nervous? I spend most of my time listening and doing as I'm told. I talk a lot when I come here, but that's because you don't give me any orders. I'll shut up if you have something important to say. I wanted to paint you because I saw you on stage at the Café Royal. Saw the energy and the grace and the joy, all in that face. But I never see any of it when you're here. Just switch it on and off. No idea. Well, what happens to the joy? You tell me. You're the artist. Go and have a look. Maybe you can tell where it's gone. What I see is a face that wants to cry. I don't... Go on. I don't mind. I cry all the time. <laughs> I'm sorry. You don't have to give me reasons. That's much better. <laughs> That's a better face. It's all mucky from me crying. Will you leave it? You're telling me what to do, you just like all the others. I tell you one thing you should do. Henry and I are going to Capri next month for a holiday. Well, that's Capri when it's a dope. In the Bay of Naples. Is that sort of Italy? It is. Well, have a nice time, but don't forget to send me a card. Come with us. I can't. I'm making a new film. I'm doing variety, making some records. What is the point of doing all that work if you can't walk away from it and enjoy yourself? Not sure. Nobody ever tells me. So come with us. I'm a respectable married woman. Not a happily married woman. You heard what I said. Go to Capri. Go to Timbuktu. Go to hell if you like. No point. I'm already there. We'll chair up all the contracts we've signed and send the money back. They can book George for me in your place. What's the point of doing all this work if I can't walk away and enjoy myself? It's taken you a long time to work that out. Always was a bit slow. That's true. Twenty years and no remission. What? It's just an old joke. I'll tell you a better joke. We spoke to the film company, told them you were too tired to make another movie at the moment. Except we didn't quite put it like that. We said you'd only consider it if they paid you fifteen thousand pounds. They rang back today. They are paying you fifteen thousand pounds. I'll spend some of it on the flat. Flat? Got me eyes on a little place in St. John's Wood. You're moving out? I'll leave you to your 28 telephones and your lift and your squiddles, your secretary. Okay. She'll keep you warm. She does. They sent a script. Do you want to look at it? Shouldn't one of us be crying? No need, I've read it. It's a comedy. Not about this, about us. Sweetheart, it's all a comedy. I love Capri. It's the first time I've been abroad and not hated it. I promised you it was beautiful. Not that I've been abroad that often. <laughs> Went to Paris once with Archie on our honeymoon. 
Another time was when I ran away from him. But I only got to Cali, and I turned round and came back again. Frightened? I had a show to do. Didn't want to let the others down. You're always doing a show. It's what I'm best at. Wrong. What you're best at is just being you. What your present? I didn't want a present. I went into this shop, a special kind of a shop, and I said, I want a present for a man who took me to Capri and showed me how to walk away from things. And seeing as how he's an artist, I'd like to buy him a paintbrush, because a lot of it's are dirty. They're supposed to be like I that. I haven't finished my story yet. So this man in the shop, he said, well, what kind of a brush? They had dozens of them, shelves full of them. So what could I do? And what did you do? I said I'll have one of each, so I've got one of each. Some of them's bad to be right, aren't they? <laughs> it was a proper artist shop. Set but what a bloody brush I'd buy on myself! Oh, you'd be pleased. I don't love you because you're rich! I know that. But I can't help it. And I like spending it on I people. I don't want it! What I love, what I value, has nothing to do with being rich and famous. It has to do with a woman from Lancashire called Grace Stansfield. But I am rich and famous. And I'm Gracie Fields. Can anything be done about that? and I did enjoy it so. Oh, I never cried so much in all my life. When the villain sees the maiden, everybody shouted, oh. Hey, I never cried so much in all my life. He promised that he'd wed her and enticed her on his yacht. And then he got her tied up in a proper sailor's knot. And he kissed her twice, the dirty dog, upon her beauty spot. Lingered near the rose and crown, the wind was howling wild. Thank you. <laughs> when up the village street there came the father of her child. <laughs> Weren't married, no. <laughs> so she tapped him for a tanner, but a bite of old and mild. <laughs> It's my 
More flavours. More fun. More fizzy. More than one. It's the Fizzbiz machine. Works like a dream. It's the business. It's the business. It's Soda Stream. High-tech quartz, accurist, ultra-thin on your wrist, ultra-slick, ultra-smooth, can't resist, diamond wrist, accurate, accurist, shame you've only two wrists, from £29.90 to £159. Anything could happen tonight. Got me LA shirt and me disco trousers all topped off with an Elvis quick. The night is young and I smell like a surfer. Want some mates to go out with. Got a mate called Brown and a mate called Jones. We're off to meet a mate called Smith. John Smith's lager with that bit of Yorkshire bite. Beautiful. I could meet a bird by the name of Lulu Moves like a Zulu on a hot tin plate She might seem keen and dance like a dream But nothing comes between me and me mate For a great little mover that goes down smoother Get yourself a mate called Smith opens a piggy bank savings account one pound covers membership for that your child gets woody then every six months if they've saved enough they get the next piggy bank free Piggle. Piggle. The piggies are waiting Piggle. 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 waiting for you santa's coming with denim the man who doesn't have to try too hard. You can enjoy the delicious taste of Kentucky Fried Chicken every day of the year except Christmas Day and Boxing Day, when you might just have to make do with turkey. It isn't like the theatre. Nobody laughs, nobody applauds. You have to get up early in the morning. You spend hours in makeup, and then when you're on the set, you have to do everything 27 times. Then you think you're finished, and the director says, let's try one more. I, I, I'm not complaining, no. Now, the, the money bought me a nice house on Capri, and I was able to look after my family. No, I'm, I'm just telling you what it was like. So I kept making these films and saying, never again. So we put the price up. And they'd say, that's all right, we'll pay. 20,000 pounds. 25,000 pounds. <laughs> all silly, really. But by the end of the 1930s, I'd signed a Hollywood contract. Four pictures at £50,000 each. Highest paid woman in the world, somebody told me. I never got the man in any of my films. Wasn't pretty enough. I was always left alone at the end, singing loud at everybody else, telling them to be cheerful. But I got myself another man off screen. Monty Bax. Now, he was a film director and an Italian. Thank you. Also a bit crazy, but then who'd be a film director otherwise, eh? Yeah. 
Is it all right? Uh, that was only... How can I best put it? It's... Perfection. Mm. <laughs> you are quite as simply the greatest entertainer in the world. <laughs> the angels on a high, they bless you with the pure gold of genius. <laughs> You're always kissing people. Yeah, that's because I love you. Seen you kissing fellas as well. well. I kiss everybody. I love everybody. But most of all, I love you. <laughs> My dad says you're a rum bugger. Your father is a very wise. I think I probably am at this Arama bar. <laughs> I'm not sure what he means, but he's <laughs> bound to be correct. Your father is wise. Your mother is beautiful. And you? You are a genius. I would like to marry you. Don't be daft. You marry me? I tried it once, and I wasn't very good at it. Yeah, I've tried it several times, and I'm a hopeless at it. I think I might still be married to Archie, I'm not sure. I think my solicitor owes his solicitor a letter, and by then we might not be married. Do you understand? No. Oh. Gracie, my oh, love. Do enjoy being knelt at. <laughs> I'm not a fit person to be your husband. Mm. Yeah, I'm not a fit person to be anybody's husband. I chase the pretty girls, eh? I play cards for money. I drink too much, I smoke too much, I spend more than I earn. Oh, and I'm, uh, I'm not even English. Obviously the perfect chap for the job. But uh, together, uh, we make the world light up. Yeah? Yes. So, eh, uh, we get a man. We make many children with the other genius and uh, my beauty. No. I've said the wrong thing. Yeah. You happen all of the no, time. Monty, this is a secret. Uh, even a Ramabagger can keep a secret. I have to go into hospital for, for an operation, a little operation. A woman's operation. So, there might be no babies. There might be no babies. We make the marvelous movies instead, eh? eh? children are very expensive anyway. <laughs> the real secret was, and I didn't tell anybody for years after, they did the little operation and they discovered I needed a major operation. It was cancer, you see. Yes. 1939 was the year I almost died. It was, it was marvellous and terrifying all at once. They said prayers in all the churches for me. I ask it, now what can you do? And Monty was there all the time. How are you, my darling? I feel like that cellophane. You look like that too. Thank you, Monty. But better than yesterday. Monty. I talked to the doctors. There won't be any beautiful babies. I too have spoken with the doctors, eh? He tells me we are very lucky to have the beautiful you. So. I will be. You're a beautiful baby. I'm frightened. Frightened? I wasn't to be frightened of. The post office said they'd had half a million letters. For me. Saying get well. Half a million. Who counted them? Suppose they've got machines to do it. Hmm. Everybody loves you. Oh, no. It's too much. All that love and affection, and I can't give any of it back. 
They all know me. But they're just strangers. I can't talk to them. I can't, can't say thank you. It's, 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 it's like a, a big room crowded with people. I want to hide in the bathroom till they go away. Oh, shush, 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 shush. Is there nothing wrong with being frightened, eh? I get frightened as well. We shall be a frightened together. We were married in America. All packed up in a little bottom drawer. I, I just happened to be there, working, honouring the contracts I'd signed. We came back to England, but by then, Italy had joined in the war, and that's when all the trouble started. We sailed to America, and now I wasn't running away from the war. But people wanted to think the worst for some reason. Well, how do you that's do fine? Great. Now, don't Grace. get the party tomorrow night. Grace. You're coming too, aren't you? I just speak with the lawyers. Eh? It's no use. There's no way around it. If we go back to England, I'd be interned. Interned? You haven't lived in Italy since you were ten. What a sort of passport at that, eh? Italian. See. Si. Why? I take out the naturalization paper here in the States in OR. When was it? 19 or 22, I guess. But I never bothered to complete it then. Well, you should have done. I didn't understand the questions. Well, I don't want them to lock you up. So I'm going to have to stay this side of the Atlantic with you. They'll say you're running away. Who say I'm running away? Those are half a million people who write to you when you were sick. They wouldn't do that. They're doing it now. Look. <laughs> you're comforting the enemy. <laughs> You've ran away with all your money and your jewels. Hey, look, look at this. They've even changed my name. I'm no longer Monty Banks, I'm Mario Bianchi, wicked Italian fascist. Oh, what? It's not true. Yeah, you know the English press. Never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Oh. We'll just have to show them then, won't we? I sang in Australia, New Guinea, Borneo, Manila, Singapore. Rangoon, Okinawa, North Africa, Sicily. I sang in deserts and in jungles. I sang in places I've forgotten and places that haven't been discovered yet. in Canada and America for war charities. The doctors kept telling me to stop, but then all doctors do that. I 
I'd almost died myself. And these lads that I was singing to, well, a lot of them were going to die, and we all knew it. We had that in common, see. We all knew about death. But that's a hard thing to tell to the newspapers. I'm looking on the bright side, though I'm walking in the shade, sticking up my chest, hoping for the best, looking on the bright side of the loud, out front, doing my job. There were times when I thought the war would go on forever, but it ended eventually. Everything ends eventually. all over. We are no longer enemies. You are balmy. <laughs> I know. Is it really over? Will they have me back? In England, I mean. Darling Gracie. You must go there and sing it. Sing at them a ride between the acts. I did a provincial tour and nobody threw anything. And then I played the Palladium. Ladies and gentlemen, there's lots I'd like to say, but I won't. I'll sing it at you. gave me seven encores. Monty was right. January 1950. Now, he decided to take me to his hometown of Cesena in Italy as part of my birthday present. We were on the train the morning after a night out in Paris. My family will not believe you're at 29. I'm 52. So who's accounting? Life will begin at 52. Everybody know that. <laughs> I don't feel so good. it's your own fault. You ate too much and you drank too much last night. Uh, Paris is the place to do things at too much. <sighs> How else can anybody do things? Eh? Except that... What? Uh, what? Uh, I'm a cold. My face is burning. 
This is Sam McCready. <laughs> he talk about me. Just like a little lad, really. <laughs> You're a, a beautiful. Monty's funeral was in Chesena. The day after the birthday. The procession was two miles long. They prayed for him in his hometown, oh yes. They loved him. And they were proud of him. I loved him. I was never in love with him. Now, that only happened the once, and I've told you about that. But, you see, Monty always told the truth about the, the gambling and the, and the drinking, the chasing girls. Though he never told me how many he caught. <laughs> so, there I was, a rich and lonely widow. And then you met Boris. Now, he wasn't looking for a rich and lonely widow. <laughs> this was all my doing. The story is that he came to fix the television set. Well, the story's wrong. He came to fix my record player. Except I called it a gramophone. I think, Miss Fields, ah. your record player is now restored to perfection. Good. Was I right? Was it the wick? Or was it the sink bunged up with fluff? Forgive me, Miss Fields, I never understood the English sense of humor. No, it was a piece of wire. Most engineering is about a piece of wire. And now, I wish you good afternoon. You'll do nothing of the kind. You'll have a cup of tea and you'll call me Gracie. Oh, that is not right. Come on. Sit down. You're looking tidy. Now, what's not right? To call you by your first name. Well, I call you by your first name. I call you Boris. Everybody on the island calls me that. I've been here over 30 years. Have you got another name? Alperovici. <laughs> Wonder they call you Boris. Come on, you pie can. Smile. This time I did the asking. I swept him off his feet, I suppose. Which makes a change. Got a meander under the staircase. And I'm teaching myself to play the maiden's prayer. We settle down, they live happily ever after. Oh, Pat, you've been my little bottom drawer. I'll let you into a few secrets. Say three, eh? That's the right number for secrets. Yeah. <laughs> Boris doesn't like me singing comic songs. I've already told you that. That's secret number one. I don't like singing Sally. If I had my way, I'd never sing it again as long as I live. That's secret number two. Number three? I had to persuade Boris to come with me on this tour. He hates leaving Capri. Is that the third secret? I think I might have made a mistake. But the people would never forgive me for getting it wrong three times. Shall I start the machine again? Oh, well, time's getting on. <laughs> the tape's running out. I know how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Gracie, you shouldn't be here. Now, I've just been talking to this nice young man from the wireless. Oh. Boris Alperovici, my husband. Uh -oh. You have a concert this evening. Oh. You should be resting. I'll not bother changing the tapes. Well, have you got enough to make a programme? Oh, I've got enough for six. I have a very protective husband. Correct. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure, love. <laughs> should have a wheelbarrow for that lot. <laughs> I hope it goes well tonight. Thank you. Eight now, just a minute. Oh. Sing loud. The only way I know. Too late to change.
What would you have told him? What do you mean, love? Well, if the tape hadn't run out, if I hadn't come and I did, what would you have told him about us? Well, I'd have said you came to, to mend my record player. We became friends. I proposed to you. We got married and lived happily ever after. Good. Well, got to give the audiences what they want to hear. But Boris, I've got a show tonight, love, and I should be resting. And if we make a muck of it, don't worry. The other player promises he'll know it by tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Bye. 